we're given a curve y equals 2 root x and we use that curve to create a region that also includes the y-axis or x equals 0 and then the horizontal line y equals 6. We first are asked to find the area of that region and then we're going to use that region to create a set of volumes and then we'll have to find those volumes. So we need a series of formulas that tells us about the area between curves as well as different ways of calculating volume. The key to these problems is being able to visualize what we're talking about and then choosing the proper orientation. I'll tell you what I mean by that in a little more detail in a second. But because there's a lot of visualization going on, I've pre-drawn some figures as I'm not the world's best artist. And I hope that'll help make it simpler to follow along. Okay, part A asks us to find the area of this region. To find an area, we need to find an area between curves. A greater function, g of x, and a lesser function, f of x. So all we're really doing are creating these infinitesimally thin rectangles and adding them all up, all the different rectangles, as we go from here to here. Now, what's key about orientation is you ask yourself, what is it that is infinitesimally thin? And it's, it's this x width. That's what gives us the dx in the integral. And so that provides what I would call the orientation to the problem. Namely, we know that we're going to be doing an integral with respect to x. So that tells us what the limits of integration are going to be as well. Namely, the x limits, 0 to 9. Now all that's left is we have to determine what constitutes the g of x and what constitutes the f of x. Remembering that we can pick any curves, any pair of curves, as long as one is always greater than the other. Well, that pretty much makes it clear that this will have to be the top curve that we choose and this will have to be the lesser curve that we choose. So we're going to write that the area of the region R is going to be the integral from 0 to 9 of the top curve y equals 6 minus the bottom curve 2 root x which I'm writing as x to the 1 half that just makes it easier to use the power rule okay let's do that integral let's do the indefinite integral first and then we'll apply the limits of integration. So we say that the area equals 6x minus 2 use the power rule x to the 3 halves over 3 halves and then we'll apply the limits of integration 0 to 9. Now I always do the power rule in two steps x to the 3 halves over the same thing and then we can do this simplification 3 halves in the denominator is the same as 2 thirds in the numerator so now we just have 4 thirds okay so how are we going to do that integral well I mean how are we going to evaluate that indefinite integral uh, we're going to plug the 9 in here. That's going to give us 6 times 9 minus 4 thirds of 9 to the 3 halves power. And then we'll subtract off this same expression evaluated at x equals 0. But notice that when we put in 0 for x in both of these places, we're just going to get 0. So there's really not going to be anything left after that. So the area equals 54 minus, okay, now let's think about this 9 to the 3 halves. 
First work with the denominator. Square root of 9 is 3. Then we cube it. 27. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 4 times 9 is 36. Our area is 54 minus 36, 18. It's a long process, but remember, start by determining what the infinitesimal is, because that tells you what the integral is with respect to, what the limits of integration are, and what your functions have to be in terms of. Okay, part B is the more challenging volume of revolution. Again, orientation here and visualization are the keys to the problem. So when we rotate our region about the y equals 7 axis, we get something that looks more like a mountain on its side. In fact, it's actually more like a volcano on its side because there's a hollow interior part. Why do I know that? It's because this region only extends up to y equals 6. But we're rotating around y equals 7. That means there's a gap between the top of the region and the axis of rotation. And whenever a gap appears, that means we've got a hollowed out volume. So. Instead of the disk method, we're going to be using its extension, the washer method. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first think about the orientation. Either using the disk or the washer method, we're creating a series of slices, each of which looks like a disk, or in this case, a washer. And those slices are lined up left to right. The thickness of the slice is the thing that's infinitesimal. And in that case, in this case, it's dx. Again, that provides the key orientation. And so we start working on the problem by knowing that we're going to do an integral with respect to dx. We also know that the limits of integration of our integral are going to be the x limits, 0 to 9. Now we need, I'm going to just say V is volume, okay, we're just copying this formula. We'll need an outer radius as a function of x and an inner radius as a function of x. I'm just going to write that a little more clearly by pulling out the pi. I've got 0 to 9 dx r squared minus r squared. Since I'm integrating with respect to dx, capital R has to be a function of x, and little r has to be a function of x. Okay, so what are those capital R and little r? That's the remaining part of the problem. Capital R is the large outer radius. That's going from here down to here. That is capital R. So what is this distance? Well, we start out at y equals 7. We go down to y equals 2 root x. The distance between those two curves is our outer radius. 7 minus 2 root x. What about our hollowed out part, our inner radius? That's going to be here. That's little r. It also has to be a function of x. But in this case, it's a trivial one because our horizontal axis is 7. The top of the region that we're rotating is 6. And so r is just 7 minus 6. So. Putting the whole thing together, the volume that we're asked to find, and notice that mercifully we don't have to actually calculate it. It's just the integral from 0 to 9 of pi times, what's our first radius? 7 minus 2 root x, that's squared. And what's our second radius? 7 minus 6, or 1 squared. 
that whole expression is what we're integrating. Again, it gets complicated, but the key is to start out by visualizing it and then determining what the thin thing is. Since the thin thing is the dx, it tells us that we're doing an integral with respect to x, it tells us our limits of integration, and it tells us that our functions have to be functions of x. Part C is the cross-section problem. And the key to orientation here is what it says in the problem. It says the cross-section, if you take it perpendicular to the y-axis, is a rectangle. That means we're going to have to work with thin slices that are perpendicular to the y-axis. I've pre-drawn that again because I'm not that good drawing on the fly. So this is the rectangle that we have to picture. It projects out of the plane, out of the paper. Orientation is key. This is the thickness. And that's not dx, that's dy. That tells us that this is going to be an integral with respect to y. So the volume equals an integral with respect to y. What are the limits of y integration? 0 to 6. And this is a cross-sectional area problem, so we just need to write, we're making rectangles, the rectangle as a function of y this time. We're going to have to express the area of that rectangle as a function of y. Well, that means it's going to be a base times a height. Call that the base, call that the height. So now I have volume equals an integral from 0 to 6, the base as a function of y times the height as a function of y, dy. Okay, well what about the base? The base is the distance from the y-axis over to the curve to root x. Well, that distance is just x, but we can't write down x because we have to do this as a function of y. So we're going to have to rewrite the curve so that we get x as a function of y. So let's say rewriting x in terms of y. Okay, what do we have? We have uh, y was 2 root x, and therefore we get y squared over 4 equals x. So our base is y squared over 4. Our height is given as 3 times our base. So we just rewrite that, 3 times y squared over 4. So our final integral can be written as the integral from 0 to 6 I'm just going to create a little more space here. Our final integral, simplifying, we get a 4 here, a 4 here, a 3 here, so we're going to write 3 sixteenths y to the fourth dy. And that's the whole problem. I do want to add, though, the method of cylindrical shells because that's another way to do this volume of revolution. So again, we have the same mountain on its side, or rather volcano on its side, but now instead of building a series of disks from left to right, we're going to build a series of shells that starts out at the center and gradually moves out to the edge, or starts out at the edge and moves to the center. In either case, the shells progress along the y-axis. Our infinitesimally thin um, aspect to the problem is dy. So our volume is going to be an integral with respect to y. 
So our limits of integration have to be the y limits. And we have to express the cylindrical shell 2 pi r has to be a function of y h has to be a function of y. Now it comes down to defining r and h. r here is the thickness or the radius of the cylindrical shell r of y. That's going to be 7 minus 2 root x, but we have to express it as a function of y. Well that's great because it's just y. 7 minus y. Okay. Now what about the height? The height is here. I'm going to draw it up here just because it's... The height is this, top to bottom. h of y is the distance from the y-axis out to 2 root x. Or rather, I mean, out to the line that uh, is y equals 2 root x. This is just the distance x. But again, we're going to have to express that as a function of y. Fortunately, we already did that earlier up here. So it's just y squared over 4. And so our final volume would be 2 pi times integral 0 to 6 7 minus y and y squared over 4. Again, I know that these expressions can get complicated. The key is first visualize what it is that you're being asked to find and second and crucially determine your orientation by finding the part of the figure that is the infinitesimally thin part. That tells you with respect to which variable you're integrating.